Hey guys, this video I'll go over George AI for the Apache. First, let's go over some settings. So if you open the settings menu in DCS and click special and click the Apache, first there's this setting, which is auto handover. If you have this checked, then when you jump into the front seat, George will automatically take over and fly for you. If you have it unchecked, then when you get into the front seat, you will be flying by default and you have to give control to George. The other settings here for George is the AI IFF color scheme. Basically, when George is looking for targets, he will bring up a list for you of all the targets he sees, and each target will have a different color. And the color is based on the color scheme here. So if you have it set to NATO, then blue is friendly, red is enemy, green is neutral, and yellow is unknown. But if you have it set to coalition, then blue is blue team, red is red team, yellow is still unknown, and white is neutral. I recommend leaving it on NATO because you always know blue is friendly, red is hostile. If you set it to coalition color, it could be a little confusing because you might see something red and you think it's a hostile, but if you're on red team, actually it's a friendly. So it's really up to your preference, but I feel like NATO uh, is a little bit easier. Now let's go over the mission editor settings. If you click on your helicopter, and click the blue button. First, if you check AI disabled, then George will not be available, so make sure you do not accidentally check that. And then you can see the track air targets. If you have this checked, then it's pretty self-explanatory. George will be able to track air targets. And for the AI IFF detection mode, basically when George is looking for targets, he needs to figure out what kind of target it is and also what team it's on. So if you have it set to simple, then in simple mode, it's basically magic. George will instantly know what team it's on and what kind of target it is. If you have it set to label, then it's kind of halfway. If you have it set to label, George will always know what team they're on, just uh, magically, but he won't always know what kind of target it is. Based on how far away they are, at what, what angle the target is, he has to try to kind of figure it out. And then if you have it set to realistic, then he will not magically be able to know anything. Uh, he will have to try to figure out what team it's on and also what kind of target it is. And one thing to note about realistic is that you have to be kind of careful setting it on realistic because it is possible for George to guess their team incorrectly. So if you have it set to realistic mode, then let's say there's George is looking at a T-72. So if there's only T-72s on red team, then George will guess it correctly on realistic. He'll no, it's on red team. But if you have T-72s on red team and blue team, it is possible for George to guess the team wrong on realistic mode, which could cause a friendly fire incident. So if you're making a mission, that's just something to keep in mind. And then the next thing is auto. So if you have it set to auto, then the mode will basically be set based on other settings in the mission editor. So if you click customize and mission options, you can see the label options here, and you can also see the F10 view options. So if you have it set to auto, then the IFF will be based on F10 view options and labels. And there is a table in the manual, and I'll put it in the video. And keep in mind that the F10 view options and labels can also be adjusted in the player's own personal settings. So if you want, you could enforce them here for the mission. So those were all the settings for George AI. Let's get into the helicopter now. Let's go over some control bindings. So for the pilot, you need to have George AI Helper Show Hide, and you need to have the same thing for the co-pilot. And then you need to go to George AI Helper, this section here, and you need to have you need to have AI Helper Hide and also forward, backwards, left and right. And then go back to Pilot and make sure you have this binded Consent to Fire. You may also want TADS Store Target, but it's optional. You can click the Show Hide button to open the AI menu. And if you're doing a cold start, you're going to notice it just says Ready Systems. So you need to hold the Consent to Fire button to get George to turn on all the systems. Roger. And now it's... And now it says startup in progress. And once George is done starting up, you'll see the menu like normal. And you can click one and two on your keyboard to swap between the seats. And there's also an AI menu for the front seat. So if you're in the front seat, you'll be gunning and George will be flying. And if you're in the back seat, George will be the gunner. So first I'm gonna go over George in the front seat. So George as the gunner. So you can click the show hide button to open the menu and you can click left to swap through your weapons. So if I click left, Unable. Uh, well, it doesn't work because I'm on the ground, but let me get into the air. So if I click left now, 
you can see George equips the gun, and you just keep clicking left to cycle through all your weapons. And the options here will change depending on what weapon you have selected. You don't necessarily have to memorize all the controls because it tells you here. So basically, the controls on the outermost ring are what happens if you hold the button. So like if I, right now it's, you see hold fire. So if I hold forward on the George switch, you can see it goes to free fire. And then if I hold forward again, it goes back to hold fire. If you have it set to free fire, then once you're tracking a target, George will automatically start firing. And if you have it set to hold fire, then every time you want George to fire, you have to click the consent to fire button. And then the one in the middle ring is if you just click it. So if I just click it forward, it'll do pilot helmet search. And if I click it back, it'll do fixed. And then the one in the middle here that says point area is what happens if you click the consent to fire button. So if you just click it, it'll do point. So whatever's on top. And if you hold it, it does whatever is on bottom, so area search. And the commands change depending on what the situation is, what weapons you have. There are a couple commands that are always the same no matter what. So like I mentioned, left clicking is always the same, it switches through your weapons. And clicking backwards will always reset the TADS. So the TADS is the targeting camera. And this bottom here is actually the only exception, that's not a command. This bottom one just tells you the status of the TADS, which is fixed right now. So if you click backwards, the TADS will always reset and just point forward. And the other command that's always the same is if you click forwards, it does a pilot helmet sight search. So basically George will point the targeting camera wherever you're looking. So if I look over there and click forward, and you can see George is pointing the targeting camera there. And you can see now on the bottom, the status of the TADS is deslaved. So this bottom part always tells you the status. And if you wanna see the targeting camera, you can actually go to your screen and click the video button and click TADS, and now you can actually see it. And if you want, you can change it to green. And you can change the zoom here too. So like I mentioned, if you click backwards, it'll reset it and you'll see it'll say fixed here. So let me click backwards. See, he pointed it back to the center and now it says fixed. And another thing, if you don't see this little dotted cross here, what you do is just click weapon and click acquisition here and make sure TADS is selected. Because if I select something else, you can see that dotted cross is not there anymore. So you need to click acquisition and TADS. And then that dotted cross will always show you where the targeting camera is pointing. So earlier I told you about George finding targets and it showing the list with the colors. So let me actually show that to you now. So I'm going to point my helmet and click forward. And George will bring up this target list which shows you what is you know near where the camera was looking. So you can use up and down to scroll through the different targets. And you can see blue here, I have it set to NATO colors, so blue means friendly. And you can see the target type. So if I scroll up and down, it switches the camera through and I can look at the different targets myself. I can click zoom here. And basically, if you click left, it exits the list and it goes away. And then if you want to re-bring the list up, you can see here it says TADS line of sight search. So you just hold it down. And you can see now it brings the list back up. An alternative to holding it down would just be to command another uh, pilot helmet sight search. So just looking in the same direction and clicking up again. And, slave. Slave. and after a couple seconds, the menu will come up. Now, whenever it's ser he's searching for targets like this and he has this list, you can see the options here change a little bit. So if you hold the switch forward, it'll actually zoom in on the camera. So you can see it zooms in and then I can zoom in again. And then you can see now it says TAD zoom minus, so I can hold it backwards to zoom out. And that zooming is not the same as this zooming. Uh, this, this zooming here just changes like the video display on your little screen. But the zooming here in the AI menu actually changes the zoom on the actual targeting camera that George is messing with. And you can see here it says FLIR. So if you remember the bottom one is holding down the consent to fire switch. So if I hold it down, it switches to DTV, so now it switches to the camera. And if I hold it down again, it switches back to the FLIR. And if you want to lock onto a target, basically you select the one you want, and then you right, you click right, and then he starts tracking it. So now I basically have this target selected. And you can see the controls always change depending on the context. Now you can see FOV is on the top here in the center, which is just clicking the consent to fire. So if I click it, it changes the FOV now. 
So the controls always change depending on the context. So if you want to know what does what, just look at this little menu here. Another thing you can do is select multiple targets. So you can see there's select here. So I can go to a target and click the consent to fire switch and it marks it as target one. And then I can mark this guy as target two. And then if I click right, it'll auto select target one. See, it went back to target one, and now what happens is that once this target's destroyed, it'll automatically switch to whatever was target two. Also, when you're using multi-select, if you're hovering over a target you don't have selected and you click right, it will select that one target, but it will disable the rest of your multi-select. So that is the multi-target select function. Now, once you have a target selected, you can see this here says not lasing. So if you click right, then he'll turn the laser on. Normally, you know, George will automatically use the laser when he needs to, but this option is just if you need to manually turn it on for some reason. Like the manual said, one example would be, instead of George firing the missile, if you're gonna manually command the missile fire, then you could use this to manually turn the laser on. Let's go over some other search modes now. You can see it says point and area in the middle. So first let's go over an area search. So you can choose the type of area search you want by holding left long. Now, if you have a weapon selected, it doesn't work. See, if I have the gun selected, I don't have that option anymore. But if you have no weapons selected, then you get these options on the side. So if I hold left, then I can choose what type of area search I want to do. And you can see there's forward and pilot helmet sight. And FCR and PFZ are related to different functions that I'll go over in different videos. But for this video, I'll go over forward and PHS. So if you do, if you click right, you can select the forward area. And you can see since areas on the bottom here, you hold down consent to fire to command the area search. And right now it's doing a forward area search, which means that basically he'll just sweep the tads back and forth until he finds something. See now, see, now he's just going to scan it back and forth. So let's select the other area search, which is PHS. So this works the same way, but it's based on where you're looking. So I can look at that mountain and hold consent to fire. Roger, slaving. And Scanning. now he's just going to scan back and forth. So, and then we can go over point search. So if I hold right, you have the point search options and you can basically select a point here. And I'll go over the different types of points in the Apache in another video. But basically what you would do is select the point you want and then you would just tap consent to fire and it would point the camera in that direction. Slaving. See, now he slaved it to that point that I had selected earlier. But one of the types of points I will go over is a target point. If you, if you bind the TADS store target button, what you can do is click it and George will store a target where you're looking. And in order to store a target, the TADS has to be in tracking mode. So what I did is I did a PHS search and I'm going to just select something. And you see it says tracking here. So now once it's tracking, I can click the store target button. And you can also store a target when you're just scrolling through the list. So as you can see, I'm not tracking here. I'm just scrolling through the list and I can still click the store button to store a target. So now what I do is if I go, if I hold right and you can see on the left there's control measure and target. And control measure is another type of point I'll go over in a different video, but the targets here are the ones that I created when I did TAD store target. So if I hold right, it brings up the menu here and this is the target I stored. So I can select it now. And now I'm going to reset the TADs. And, saved. and now I'm going to do a point search. And now it points it back to the target point I had selected. And when you're in the point menu selecting what point you want to look at, you can see the middle here says last stored target. So if you click your consent to fire, you can see it selects your last stored target that you made. One more thing to mention about the list. So when George creates the target list, it is sorted based on what type of search you did. So if you did an area search or if you did a direct search, which is where you did the just clicking it forward, the pilot helmet site search, then it'll be based on priority. So whatever is at the top of the list is the highest priority target. But if you did a point search, then it'll be based on distance. So whatever's at the top of the list is what's closest to the point. And another thing to mention is that whenever you are going through your targets here, when you have the option for TAD zoom and also selecting the FLIR or the TV camera, the manual said zooming in with the TADs and changing it from TV to FLIR actually can affect how George detects what target it is. So if you're using like realistic setting, 
which is where it's not magic. George actually has to try to figure out what kind of target it is based on how far away it is and the angle you're looking at. It said if you switch between TV and FLIR and also if you do the TADS zoom in, it can help George to figure out what type of target it is. Now if you're tracking a target and if you have a weapon selected like gun, then you'll see this thing here that says ADJ. So basically right now I'm tracking. You can see the tracking gates around it. But in certain situations it might be hard to track the target. So if you hold down, if you hold down the consent to fire switch, then you can see the tracking gates are gone and George is manually adjusting the sensor to keep it on target. And if you let go, then it goes back to the auto tracking gates. So in some situations that could be useful. One more thing I forgot to mention when you're in this list mode is that you can see it says all targets here, which means it's also showing friendlies. But if you hold left, you can have it show hostile and unknown only. But right now it's not doing anything because there are no hostile targets here. So those were the main features for George if you're in the back seat. Now I'll go over if you're in the front seat. So if you're in the front seat, if, if you have the setting checked that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the auto handover, then once you jump into the front seat, George will be flying for you. And if you want to fly, you can click C and your stick will come up and take manual control. But for now, I'll just leave George flying. And if you click the show hide button, it'll open the menu on the left side. And you can see there's different modes. There's hover. And if you click left, you can cycle through the modes. So combat, CMWS, and flight. So the HB is hover mode. So in hover mode, you can click up and down to adjust the altitude. altitude. So I can decrease, and R is for radar, so I'm, uh, which is basically altitude above the ground, and B would be for barometric. So I'm going to, you know, drop it down to 50 feet. And now George is going to lower the altitude for me. Another thing you can do in hover mode is if you hold the George control forward, backward, left, and right, you can move the helicopter. So if I hold it left, left. you can see he slides it left a little bit. And I can also hold it back to move backwards a little bit. And the other thing you can do is, you know, is tell him where you want to point the helicopter. So if I want to point left, you look left and then tap it to the right. And now he's going to turn it right. And on the menu here, this little yellow, these two yellow bumps are where your selected heading is to point the helicopter to. And you can also see it here, 63 degrees. And you can see if I choose another direction to point at, it's going to change. Copy. It's changed to 83 degrees here. So that's the hover mode. Now we'll go over flight mode. So in flight mode, if you hold it left and right, it lets you fine tune the angle to look at. So if I hold it left, you'll see the little bug start to move. And pushing it forward and backward adjusts your speed. So if I push it forward, you can see ground speed goes to 40 knots. Copy. Now in flight mode, to change your altitude, you have to hold it up and down. So if I hold it down, you can see the altitude change. And in flight mode, you also have the ability to just turn it where you're looking. So if I look off left and right click it, Copy. At the location. then he'll turn left now. So next we'll go over combat mode. So in combat mode, you cannot fine tune the heading. If you hold it left or right, it goes by 90 degrees. So if I hold it left, it'll basically just break left. In combat mode, if you press it forward, it'll look where the TADS is looking. Now, right now, the TADS is not looking at anything. So I'm going to enable the TADS, and I'm going to point the TADS off to the right, and then I'm going to click forward short. And now George is going to turn the helicopter to point where the TADS is looking. And in combat mode, if you click right short, it will f George will fly to the direct to queue. But that has to do with the navigation system, so I'll go over that in a different video. So the last mode is CMWS. This lets you adjust the countermeasures. So you can click forward to arm or safe it and back and backwards to set it to auto or bypass. So those were the main features of the George AI. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.